Hey everybody, today I want to show you guys some more semi-ICF related stuff. It's more for uh, the DIYers who are wanting to do their own foundations, their own ICF walls, and really any contractor that is using best practices. I absolutely love this product and we've been using it for quite a while and I'll just kind of get into how the whole system works. Have a clip from an older pour that we did that I can show you guys here in a second. It's called the Fast Foot System. And it's uh, by a company called Fabform. They also make all of our bracing and stuff that we use on, a, on our ICF, the Zont system. But uh, their form is really cool. It's, it's, a, it's a waterproof fabric that goes under your footer to create a waterproof membrane that goes under your footer to help with waterproofing. Because if you kind of think about all that effort you spend waterproofing your wall, and then your footing sitting in wet soil, wicking moisture up into the inside of the wall, and it um, you know, seems a little counterproductive. So this is actually a really cool product and I'll get into kind of how it works. So the first thing we do is we go around the whole perimeter of our foundation um, with stakes. And I use wood stakes uh, in this particular instance because it's easier to screw into. But if you're going to DIY it, metal stakes, you, know, you can sell them on Craigslist, whatever, when you're done, you can rent them more than likely. Lumber's high right now, so cutting up a bunch of two by fours into stakes seems silly. We have them, or I would probably be using some of my metal stakes as well. But once you get them run, you just take a, your laser, you rent one from you know, Home Depot if you don't have one, and you just uh, you set these rails exactly on grade, just exactly on grade. And so what that does is everything that's important about ICF footers, and really any footers, but there's the plywood forms and the metal forms that are on regular stem walls are a little more forgiving that they can float over an uneven footer a little bit better. ICF, you have to spray foam it to the foundation. So if you're doing that and you've got it an inch and a half out of level, you're, you're wasting a lot of foam. It's just a pain to shim it up, right? Once it's done, it's fine, but it's more work. So if you can get a flat footer, that's everything. And with this, you are as flat as your laser. Is all you do is fill it up. Um, you know, when you're using 2 by 12s that are kind of floating along the ground, you might shim them up, you might stake them to, to grade, but most of the time they don't, and that's okay for other kinds of foundations. But anyway, so what we've got with the fast foot is uh, it comes, let me see if I can pull this out here. It comes with all these lines. It's got a center line that you want to lay right in the center of the wall. A lot of times we'll stick a couple nails in the, in the ground. Uh, right through the center line to kind of hold it but for our purposes today doing about a eight foot piece I don't need to do all that but anyway so you get the center line in and then it also has lines for a 16 inch wide footing a 20 a 24 28 32 all the way up to I don't know like 44 inches so we have a 24 inch foot wide footer here you're in the your center lines here your 24 inch line is right here so you hold that down and you bring this up over, you take your slap stapler, and you put it there. Then you do the same thing over here, you take your 24 to the ground, you hold it up tight, and you staple it. And you just do that all the way down. Bring that back to the middle. I'm gonna put my 24 down. And so what, what's happening is maybe my ground isn't level, maybe the dig's not perfect, but I'm keeping the line that it will keep you a 24 inch wide footer on the ground. It'll bulge out in the middle, which is actually good. It makes your footer a little stronger. That curve makes it less likely to crack. So that's better than most of your other forms that might, that you might see that are just a big square or a rectangle. And anyway, I'm not going to staple this a ton because so I'm going to take this back apart. <laughs> but when you, uh, when you staple it every, you know, four to six inches, it's actually, uh, it'll hold a ton of pressure. So that's the gist of it. Then once all that's done, we'll put the rebar in, we'll get ready for the inspection. And then right before we pour, you're just gonna take a couple two by fours and screw them here so they don't push out. You'll see a lot of guys online that lay them down and that's great. Uh, I don't like having to screed around boards. So I'll lift them up off the ground a little so I can just run a, a two by four screed board and, and get my footings just perfect with no little lips around the boards and stuff. So it's a really, really nice system. I love it. There is one upgraded version of this 
and I'll take you inside the shop and kind of uh, show you a little mock-up I have of that. It's, it's a monopore. I don't think I would DIY the monopore, guys. It is uh, it's a couple levels trickier, and there's a lot more that can go wrong. But if you're going to be pouring your own walls, or if you're a contractor, I mean, you can upcharge somebody for this. I mean, a few hundred dollars for this form, and they have a much more functional footing. And I mean, I think a lot of people would pay for that if they knew about it. And uh, I, my guys love working with this because just like everything else with ICF, it's lightweight. The heaviest thing you're going to carry is a 20-foot 2x4 or a 20-foot stick of rebar. The form is super light. You know, you're not, you're not lugging around concrete soaked 2x12s two by, two by and, and just big heavy items. So it's, and it is fast. Um, I mean, you throw this in, I've, I'm, usually one to two of my guys can do a whole footer in a few hours and be ready for inspection. So real quick. I'm going to take you into the shop, but first I'm going to play a couple videos. They're a couple years old. I didn't have a mic, so the, the audio may not be perfect. But, I mean, it's just uh, just kind of show you on site with one that we're actually pouring, and you can see how it fills up because it seems crazy that this would hold back the concrete. But I know that I've been hired a few times after somebody gets their butt kicked on a footer and they're scared to pour their walls, and really the walls are the easy part. Footers can really get you into, into trouble. This system really kind of fixes all the issues you're ever going to have with a footer so anyway without further ado i'll get into that i'll show you these videos real quick and i'll see you in the shop getting ready to pour a footer on a house for a buddy of mine and i wanted to show off the fast foot system everybody's always asking when they see pictures of this footer um, before we pour it it's kind of different and people don't get how it works so i was going to show you um i'll take the i'll take the camera here and uh show down the footer it's basically not a normal 2x12 uh laying on its side laying on its edge it's just a 2x4 that we put on grade with a laser and then you just hang the bag hang the fast foot um it's a woven plastic if you get real close you can kind of see the weave in it and so it's real strong it'll hold up to uh, the concrete pressure we staple it to that and we just fill it up to the top of the 2x4 so everything's perfectly on grade and the cool thing it gives you is a um, the vapor barrier that will go in the crawl space goes under the footer, keeping the footer dry or not in contact with the, uh, the earth as well. So um, making the vapor barrier a lot more functional. It does a lot of other cool stuff too. But anytime we're doing the uh, ICF, it's great because we have a nice level footer. Um, but that's kind of the, uh, the gist of it. So normally on a site, you're going to have your fab form laid out exactly the center line, exactly in the center of your wall, and then you'll build your forms on top of it. But just for giggles, I want you to be able to see this. But the center of the monopore system are the monopore legs. They're fully adjustable. They're really neat. I'll show you one up close real quick. Um, and they come with these uh, kind of Allen drivers that kind of have a rounded ball and the end of the... Uh, the threaded rod has a, an Allen drive, so you can just very quickly change the, the height of the leg. Once it's screwed on the wall, obviously, you can... I'm going to go ahead and drop that. Um, once, you, uh, once you do that, you can, you can make it taller, and bring it back down, and you can get it back level. So... Um, it's very, and normally on a job site, there's going to be a guy on a laser, there's going to be me on this side, one of my guys on the other side, and we're going to be doing it together because the whole wall will kind of, you know, if you drop this one too much, this one starts coming up. Once you get it going, it levels really quickly, and it's very stable. I mean, my guys will walk around on this wall while it's on these legs. So we'll put it right on the uh, center line like it should have been. And the next step, once you're here, obviously your rebar is run, and you're going to fold this up. Now, we want a 24-inch wide footer, let's say. So you hold it down at the 24, and you fold it up to the wall. And then we're going to attach a 2x4 all the way down both sides. And then that creates the bag, and that's a waterproof bag. And the cool thing about this is there's no cold joint between your footing and your wall for water to penetrate, you know, if your waterproofing fails on the outside. And again, like I said, the biggest thing is your, you have a waterproof membrane under your footer, 
keeping your contact out of your concrete out of contact with the ground so it's not wicking all that moisture up into your concrete wall. Like I said, all the waterproofing in the world on the outside doesn't really help that. Um, so even before they invented this, I was running my vapor barriers under my footings and everything just because I thought it was a good practice. This form is kind of the, you know, you know the, the latest, the most cutting edge version of that. I love it. We use it all the time. I do a form of this on my swimming pools where I you know, form it on the outside and let the concrete flow to the inside so I get a one-piece shell on a monopore pool. And I use the, the heck out of the legs in that, in that way. So real quick, I'll, uh, I'll cut for a second, come back and show you what it looks like all assembled. And uh, like I said, if you're going to build a house anytime soon, obviously I love ICF. I think it's a no-brainer right now cost-wise. But this is a cool footer. doesn't add a lot of expense. I mean, the actual form is a few hundred dollars for a typical house. And you can do it yourself. Um, it is not hard. It's not heavy at all. Um, but if you're going to you know, hire a concrete guy to do it, it shouldn't add more than a few hundred dollars in material. They can do it just as fast or even faster than their typical forming system. And your installer, your wall guys will love it because your footer will be dead level, um, better than any, any other footing system I've ever used. So I'll show you real quick what it looks like, and then we'll get out of here and... Uh, if it'll ever get warm enough, I will show you guys an ICF pool next week. Okay, so now we're basically ready to pour. We've got our two by four holding the uh, fast foot in place. And I mean, you gotta picture all the rebars in it and the bracings on, but we'll zoom in here and just kind of show you. So as the, as the concrete is pumped in from the top, it fills in the bag first. A lot of, but the reason I wouldn't DIY it is we get really technical. We put a lot of plasticizers and calcium in it to firm that up keep from having cold joints on the way up but also get this to solidify before we get you know 15 feet high on a lift so this is a really cool system like I said if you're going to DIY it I do it the way I showed you at first but this is available and I just I really want people to know the kind of tech that is in the marketplace right now you know from the Ozarks we are very slow to the party a lot of times um, with new technology but this is not necessarily more expensive and it is so much better, especially where we're from, where the water moves laterally through the ground and stuff. This, uh, this is a very, very good tool to just plan on when you're building. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if the weather will clear up this week, it's going to snow tomorrow and it's April 20th, which is crazy. I'm supposed to be dropping that liner later this week and I'll have a cool ICF pool to show you. Fingers crossed and uh, see you next time.